Welcome back to the Red Zone. We wrap things up with North Central College Sports Information Director, Clark Tushar. Clark, as always, thanks for stopping in. Glad to be here. So let's start off with the women's volleyball team. They had a big weekend at the Tiffany Robinson Memorial Tournament as Karen Bunkenberg sets the all-time record for victories. Uh, yeah, they won three out of four matches over the weekend. Uh, their win over Aurora on Saturday put Karen over the, uh, over the mark at 267 victories. Uh, certainly a, a good uh, you know, accomplishment for somebody who's really put together a sustained, uh, successful career uh, on the bench at North Central. And her career's been good, but this season's looking even better as the Cardinals, with the win over Milliken last night, are almost ensuring themselves a spot in the tournament. Uh, yeah, you know, they, um, it was probably the biggest match they've had as a program in about three years. Uh, and they certainly uh, played like it, uh, got up to a great start, uh, finished strong, uh, put themselves in a position to play for uh, a conference title, or at least a share of it, uh, next Tuesday at Elmhurst. Well, the Red Zone was there to see the volleyball team take down the Big Blue. Let's go to the highlight. Senior night festivities in full swing at Myrner Fieldhouse as Janae Harner and the other seniors are honored before they get set to play Milliken and CCIW kill leader Audrey Kradchak. In the first set, an early run was started by Kedron Orison and her kill to make it 4-2. Now 9-2 as this run was highlighted by Jesse Fiala with back-to-back -back aces. She had three in the set and the Cardinals take the first one 25-16. The seniors would highlight another quick start in set two as Kluke sets up Kayla Murphy who hammers it home for a 9-3 advantage. Now 10-5 and they go back to that combo on the right side again. The Big Blue get a hand on it but the ball sails out for a North Central point. Janae Harner showing her persistence. She can't land the first kill but makes sure the next one won't miss and they go on to win 25-21. Set three would belong to the Big Blue and Kradchek. She had six kills in the set and 20 on the night as Milliken would take the third set 25-17. To the fourth set we go as Eggert gets another big dig to lead to Amanda Hilner's kill. That makes it 17-14 Cardinals. Laura Kluke again would find Hilner two points later to extend the lead to five. And Janae Harner serves up an ace the next point to make her presence known during an 8-0 run by the Cardinals. Eggert serving for match point and Jade Becker of the Big Blue knocks it long. Cardinals moved to 5-1 and one, and one step closer to the CCIW tournament. Clark, you sort of mentioned it that a match with Elmhurst could be a big one as Elmhurst is sitting at 5-0 and oh in the conference, Cardinals 5-1. and one. So really the Cardinals could show that they could really match up with a nationally ranked team if they can come away with a win. Yeah, it's tough to ask for a better situation than that going into the last week of, of conference play uh, to be able to control your destiny in terms of winning a share of the conference championship and earning the right to host the conference tournament, which they would, owning the tiebreaker with a victory there. Uh, Elmhurst is ranked ninth in the country right now. They've been playing really well all season long, uh, really strong front lines, so it's going to be a challenge, uh, but they've given themselves the opportunity to play for it. You know, another team that's got a lot of leadership on it is the men's cross-country team. They weren't able to come away with the victory in a race for the first time with their, you know, top runners essentially going at the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh Brooks Invitational. Do you think that's a, sort of a, a stumble for the Cardinals, or do you think that's just something along the road to the ultimate goal of a national championship? I think in terms of performance and, and the kind of, uh, the kind of uh, effort the guys were able to put out and, uh, and how they were able to place in the, in the meet, uh, I think it's pretty uh, consistent with how they've done this season. Uh, they were missing one of their top runners, John Crane, who's still uh, you know, on the mend after mm -hmm. uh, suffering a, a, a slight injury. Uh, you know, as it's you know, normally Coach Carey's MO to take a cautious approach with those things in the regular season, make sure everybody's ready to go. Uh, for the championship meets at the end of the year, uh, you know, and they finished second by six points in a in a 38 team field, which is a very minuscule margin. So uh, you know, it's nothing certainly to be concerned about. And I think uh, you'll see that that team continue to improve uh, as they have every year that uh, that coach has been here. Yeah, it seems the goal for that program is always the national championship, and uh, another team may have that goal next season or in the winter as the men's basketball team opens up ranked number three by D3 News. Uh, yeah, you know, we thought they would be ranked fairly highly. I don't know if anybody expected them to be ranked that high. Um, you know, they'll get an opportunity pretty early on to, uh, to put that to the test. Uh, in the uh, tip-off tournament, we play uh, Hope College, which was ranked seventh in that poll and was ranked number one most of last season. So uh, certainly an opportunity for them to, to make a statement uh, on a national level early on. Well, it should be interesting to see the Cardinals make another run in the championship. Thanks so much for joining us, Clark. Thank you. The Cardinals finish off their three-game road trip this weekend as they head up north to take on the Redmen of Carthage College. I'm Mark Dahlquist. We'll see you next week on the Red Zone.